This is GabNet, the Great American Broadcast Network, now in its eighth year of talk like you've never heard it before. Hey everybody, there's Alex, Mr. Ramble, and we go until midnight tonight from New York. Hey folks, guess who we got here? Our regular our regular weekly guest. And he's gonna put on the, he's gonna put on the hat. You watch, he's gonna put on the hat. Oh boy. Well, there he is, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> It's a different day. It's the Unabomber. It's, day. it's the Unabomber. That's right. <laughs> it's a if different... I was the Unabomber, I would have blown myself up. Yeah. Now, you say you got new glasses there? Got new glasses, new apartment. Yeah. Why'd you get new glasses? Were the old ones getting a little bit foggy or whatever? The, the old ones, I, I, I couldn't see so well. Oh, I see. Okay. Well, I'm I'm having trouble lately. You know, it, was, it got to the point where when after I had this this eye thing done, uh, I my f- uh, vision started degrading. I had really? a, yeah, I was I was for you know uh, for a long time I didn't have to read anything on the screen here. I mean, I didn't have to put on glasses, and uh, now I have to. Ever since I had these uh, the eyes opened up, I I don't know. That and this drug I take, this pregabalin, also blurs your vision. Oh, you and the pregabalin. Yeah, well. I take pregabalin. It doesn't make me loopy like you. Yeah, yeah well, that's because you had so many drugs in you over your lifetime. <laughs> what, me? That it goes oh, easy. Oh, come on that, now. You know, it's easy for you. You know, me, I'm very sensitive to drugs. I just, you know, I mean, I took the pregabalin last night, and I'm fine. I'm not you know, you're hearing me talk. I'm coherent. Right. I'm oh, remem- yeah. I'm remembering most things that I should remember at almost 83 years of age. You know, so uh, I'm fine. But my vision gets blurry from it, and that's one of the side effects of it. I don't know if your vision gets blurry, but you don't know. You're wearing your glasses. Right. Right. Yeah. And uh, do you wear those for seeing far away? I mean. For both. See, yeah, see, see, see I, I, I don't have trouble with, you know, I wouldn't have to, I don't have to wear glasses in a car, for instance, when I'm driving. Right. But uh, I wear them all the time. But I'm finding that now, it used to be I could sit here at the screen and, and see everything on the screen just right, and I'm really, I'm having a, a problem with it now, you know? Hmm. So... Well, you're not a spring chicken anymore. Uh, it, it, it don't rub that in. Who is a spring chicken? If I were a spring chicken, I'd have feathers. But anyway. Good night, everybody. Hey, good night, everybody. We'll be here all week. Yeah. So you, you said you were going to do a, a thing with the comedy store in L.A. Right. And what is that exactly? It's telling uh, stories. Like, I want to tell a story about how I became a paid regular. Also, oh, it's about stories of you and the comedy right. store. Right. Yeah. Well, also, I'm going to tell a story about Memphis. I, I was playing Memphis, and they told me, don't talk about Jesus and don't talk about Elvis. So I open up with, so I'm butt-fucking Elvis with a crucifix. <laughs> oh, jeez. Did you really? <laughs> yeah, I really did. And how'd that go over? It went over well. Surprisingly. Oh. Well, I was, I was so... Messed up, you know, who, who, who knew? Who knew? Who knew? I, I, I had giant cojones. So anyway, this thing the Comedy Store is doing, I guess they're going and getting people who played the Comedy Store and having them tell stories about the Comedy right. Store. Right, Yeah. Comedy Store, folks, is a, a comedy club in L.A. that was originally owned by Mitzi Shore. Right. Uh, whose son is Paulie Shore. Right. And um, I think he used to get... He used to get good times at that place, right? You... Polly? Yeah. Yeah, Polly got the best shots. <laughs> and they were they her husband was originally um Sammy Shore. Sammy Shore. Now there's a he used, gr- to open up, he used to open up for Elvis. 
there's a great comedy name. Sammy Shore. Here's Sammy right. Shore. Yeah. yeah. Was that his real name? Yeah. Oh, wow. Wow. Well, Mitch is short. It's his real last name. His name happens to be Sammy. Yeah, yeah. So he, what happened with him? Did he die or she divorced him? or? She divorced him. He, She got the comedy store in the divorce. Yeah, and the kid. And the, and the four kids. The four kids? Wow. Right. Now, when you were at the comedy store... Uh, when, when did you first appear at the comedy store? I see, playing the comedy store is a big deal. I mean, the people who right. came out of there were people like Letterman came out of the comedy store. Uh, Kinison came out of the comedy right. store. I mean, almost everybody. Gary right. Shandling. I mean, we could go on and on and on. Uh, right. All worked at the comedy store at one point. Um, and I started working there in 85. And check this out. I never they had to showcase for Mitzi to become a paid regular, mm -hmm. but I never showcased. I got I'm down in L.A. I just finished doing the comedy competition. Mm -hmm. I came in fourth, so I took that and I ran down to L.A. with the the momentum, you know. Mm -hmm. And I get to I get to the comedy store. My first night I'm there, I run into Sam Kennison. He says, "Oh my God, it's the Angel of Death." And then I turn around. There's Robin, Robin Williams. And he goes, "Kravitz, you're still alive." Boom! I'm a paid regular. Really, you didn't have, because all these people recognized you. Right. You didn't have right. to. You didn't have to audition. And they all vouched for me. Also, they, they all said, "You know, he's a good comic." Really? Oh, okay. right. Yeah. Well, see, that's good. If Robin Williams said you were good. She must have won. Oh, okay, put him on. Right. Right. So do you? And Sam. Sam. I had worked with Sam up in San Francisco. Yeah. Every time he came up to San Francisco, I worked with him. Yeah, so he so, knew he knew you from up there, right? So, so when I came down, I was just basically I showed up one night, and after that, I started getting paid. I started getting spots. Now, let me ask you this question: Did you start doing movies before that point or after that? The first movie I did was Navy Three, and now, I was still in San Francisco. And, I got to San Francisco in eighty one. And what was the movie? Sudden Impact. Sudden Impact, Clint Eastwood. Right. You can't Jerry be, Harry. You can't beat that. You got me my SAG card. Yeah, got you your SAG card, and uh, you said he was delight. He was delightful to uh, work with. Oh yeah, I, I told you this story, didn't I? So, I'm on location, and I got like twenty five cents to my name. Right. So I'm eating food. I'm stealing food. I'm eating food. I'm stealing food. You, in other words, you're eating some of the food from the craft services, and then you're putting some of it in your pocket. Right, because I got to eat that night, because you know I'm on location. Yeah. And I feel a paw, not a hand, a paw on my shoulder, and I look up, and it's Eastwood. Yeah. And he says, "You don't have to steal it, Stephen. You can have it." <laughs> and then he gives me, he gives me fifty bucks, and he says, "Make sure you eat while you're here." And every day he came up to me at meal, and he said, "Have you had enough to eat? Is everything okay?" He he would check up on me. How cool is that? Wow, that's good. And then the the rap party, I'm actually there with the woman that I'm sharing this apartment with now. Mm -hmm. And he walks all the way across the room. He introduces himself to her and he says, it's a pleasure working with Steven. Pleasure blowing him away. <laughs> because he kills you in the movie. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Now, now, wait a minute. You say you're on location, but the location was San Francisco, wasn't it? No, it was Santa Cruz, and then San Francisco. I shot a couple of days in Santa Cruz and a couple of days in San Francisco. So what? What was Santa Cruz? I mean, is that was that doubling as San Francisco? Yeah, the courtroom. Yeah, be, oh, the courtroom was in Santa Cruz. Right, right. And then we shot under, like, down by uh, the piers. You know, under where the Bay Bridge, under the Bay Bridge. Yeah, that's where we shot the uh, car scene. Yeah. Where I, I go after him with a baseball bat. Right. And I'm, I'm supposed to take out his back window. And I'm thinking, I'm going to be leaning out the window and the bat's going to be bouncing off the back window. You know what I mean? Because yeah. I'm not. I'm, but in those days, I had muscles. And yeah. I broke the back window in one swing. It, the whole thing exploded. You know, we, we drive up next to him. And it, it's like they said, 
And since we called the stunt guys to do this, and, and Eastwood said, no, these guys are having a ball, let them do it. <laughs> so we got to do our own stunts. <laughs> wow. And you can see that in, in the movie Sudden Impact, if you can find it somewhere. I'm sure you can probably find it on like HBO Max, as most I'm of sure. the old Clint Eastwood films that were at Warner Brothers. And uh, you just uh, you just uh, go to that, and uh, you'll see the scene where these three thugs are following Dirty Harry, and then they're trying to push him off the road or whatever. Right, right. We throw Molotov cocktails in his car. Mm-hmm. I got to throw a Molotov. I got to break his back window and throw a Molotov cocktail. Yeah, and and, uh, I, and I actually got it in on the first try. Now let me ask you: You're leaning out the window to do this, right? Right. Was right. anybody holding on to you to make sure you didn't fall out of the window? No. No? Wow. See, but you had fun doing that. Oh, I had a ball, you kidding? I mean, look what I'm doing to Clint Eastwood. Right, 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 right. <laughs> I, like, I'm a threat to Clint Eastwood. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but uh, but it's amazing. He, was, uh, he didn't direct that picture, did he? Yes. Oh, he did? Okay. So he was your director and your co-star. Right, and he, he would always say a moment for the actors, a moment for the actors before we shot the scene. Yeah. There's always a moment, and he only did two takes. He just did two takes, and he would say print one or print two, check the gate, print one, print two, and that was it. Moving you, on. You know that's actually good directing, because yeah, it's very number, good directing. Number one, you're not exhausting your actors. Right. Okay which it's horrible. There are people who go for like 50 takes because they don't like the ones they've gotten. And right. and finally, when they finally do do the, the take that is good, it's just like the first one they did. You right, know? right, right. And, and Spielberg learned this years ago. He got known as a guy who just spent too much money and too much time on movies doing 50 takes of everything. And by the time he had a bad reputation, he got to George Lucas, who said, I'll let you make the movie, but keep it on budget. And he learned how to do everything in a couple of takes. Right. You know, and to be right, happy right. with them, you know. Right. So that's a good direction. Well, if you know what you're doing, if you know what you're doing, Alex, you only need a couple of takes. Right. You know? And, and like I said, with Eastwood, there was a pause before we shot. A moment for the actors, we, you know, you, you decided what you were going to do. Yeah. And acting is reacting. I mean, if the guy you work in a scene with is doing their job, then all you're doing is reacting to them. Right. And most of your, you, you didn't have any real, many lines in that picture because most, no. of, most of the time you were just reacting to the guys around right. you, giving him a bad time. And then he, I think in the scene in the elevator, goes up against one of your guys. Right. And pushes him up against the wall. And don't you ever. And then he throws him up against me. Yeah, yeah. And you have a surprised look on your face. Right. And then the fun, the cool thing is they gave me a, a like a, a, not a plastic bat. What do you want to call it? Probably, I had a real bat when I took out the window, but when they had the camera truck, right, they have, you're driving down the road and there's a camera truck right next to you. Mm -hmm. And I'm swinging at the camera, but they, I'm just swinging on both sides of the camera. And then they cut that in, so it looks like I'm really just beating the hell out of his car. Yeah, yeah, and adding sound effects and everything else. Oh, right, yeah. right, right, yeah. right. So I yeah. think my line was, there he goes. Really? Yeah, as he, as he drove by, it was like, there he goes. I don't think you even had a line in the courtroom, did you? you just reacting no. in the elevator. right. Yeah. Right. But boy, that must have been, a, you know, that's got to be a thrill for you, because sometimes your first movie is like, you know, a B-movie. Right. You know, and here you are in an A movie with Clint Eastwood. With Clint Eastwood. Clint fucking Eastwood. Clint fucking Eastwood. Probably How at that, is that probably at that point one of the biggest stars in the world. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. That was like at the peak of his his, his uh his career. And I Although, think I think uh, if I'm not mistaken, isn't wasn't Dirty Harry the third film in the Dirty Harry Thing, trilogy. I think it was Dirty Harry, Magnum Force, and then... Sudden Impact. Sudden Impact. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. That was, uh, you know. So, it, go go watch it, folks. There's there's Steve. Also... And, and, and the, the other guy, there was one guy who had the most lines, 
and he was he was already in the union. And then there was me and this other guy, and Eastwood said, make sure they have lines, make sure they have lines so they get their SAG card. Because in those days you had to do you had to do a SAG film to get a SAG card. Now you can just buy into SAG. You don't even have to do a movie. Oh, you don't even you have mean, to do a movie to join SAG. Not anymore. Jeez, because well, I'm a member of SAG because the two unions merged. Right. You know, right. So, uh, I, you know, it's, I mean, I, I I always wanted to be in a movie. That was one of my, that was my bucket one of my bucket list things. I wanted to be in a movie. You know, if, even just for five seconds, you know. Right. Um, I bet I did. I bet I did around twenty. About twenty films. Yeah. I'll have to look up your IMDb. In fact, let me here. Hold on a second. I will look. See if it's up, up to date. It might not have all the films I was in. Let's see here. IMDb. I did a lot of films for Corman. A DB. Okay. IMDb, and then I, I bring this up here. And then I go to, uh, let me see here, uh, ba -ba 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 -ba, Steve Stephen Kravitz. Well, don't forget, Alex. I did a I did a series. Yeah, that would be here too. Tw Twenty two episodes. Um, Stephen Kravitz. Oh, there you are. Uh, ba -ba -ba -ba. It doesn't have your picture though. Hmm. I don't think there is your picture. Uh, well, wait a minute. Well, no, there's a there's a uh, trailer of the animal which you were in. Right. But uh, here, uh, let's see here. Where are the films? Uh, actors previous. Uh, ha, 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 ha. Uh, uh, let me see here. Let me just known for Howard the Duck. Yeah, I, I tend to forget that one. Uh. <laughs> Howard the Duck, uh, Sudden Impact, The Animal, and The Hot Chick. So you did two films with uh, Rob Schneider. Schneider. Huh? Right. Yeah. Right. Uh, let me see here. Known for, but where is it? Where does it say? Actor, uh, Hot Chick. Sting of the Black Scorpion. Yeah, right. Did two films, Black Scorpion, Black Scorpion 2, and then I did Black Scorpion the series. Oh, really? That was, that was what was yeah, here it, here it says, 22 episodes. And we, did you have a major role in that? You must have if yes. you lasted for 22 episodes. Right, I was in, I was in every episode. That was, those were the days when they, when they did 22 episodes. Right. Today on you know, like Netflix, it's only eight episodes. That's it. Right. 22 uh, episodes. I was in the opening, opening uh, credits. I had a single card. Just my name mm. and my face. You know the opening uh, music and everything. Mm -hmm. The opening of the of the TV series. I was I was in the opening. And and where were you billed? First, second, third. I think I was fourth. Fourth. Okay. Well, that's good. Right. That's good. Uh, let's see here. What the solar opposite? Right. What was that? Who did I play in that? It says, played, it says you played. It says you played Arnold. Right, Arnold. But who was Arnold? I have no idea. <laughs> I have no idea. <laughs> I have no idea who one, Arnold. One of the was. more memorable movies that was in right. nineteen ninety eight. Okay, Nash Bridges, five episodes. Right. What'd you play in Nash Bridges? It says it's uh, Ira Buxbaum. Ira Buxbaum, yes, yes. Uh, and he was what? He was a lawyer. No, oh, you played a lawyer. Yes. Boy, that was against type. In in Black Scorpion, I played a cop. <laughs> Here's Black Scorpion Two: Aftershock, the Drew Carey Show. Oh yeah. Two episodes. Right. What did you do on that? I'm not quite sure. <laughs> See? I wonder. I wonder if we interviewed George Clooney and we read him this li his list, if he right. would come up with as many I don't knows as you have. Well, he might not have been absent for most of it too. Yeah. Uh, don't uh, quit your day job as the limo driver. 
I have no, I don't even remember that at all. Blood Fist? Yeah, that was a Corman film. It's, I, I would believe it was a Corman film. With a name like that, Blood Fist, it had to be right. a Corman film. Right. Uh, let's see, Excessive Force? Another Corman film. Black Scorpion? Corman. Tales from the Crypt, the TV series. Right. That was not Corman. No. Uh, Mr. Saturday Night? Oh, yes, yeah. you were in that. Right. But didn't they use some already existent footage of you? They used my MTV spot. Okay, but you got paid for this picture because they oh, yeah. used... Yeah. I, got paid, I got paid more for the picture than I did from MTV. <laughs> Candyland? Right. Wow, you know, you really do have quite a... Quite a Howard the Duck... Light Blast. Now here comes the one that, that is just amazing because I remember you in this. It is burned into my brain. What's that? The Lady in Red. <laughs> it, it, folks, if you ever come across this movie, Kelly LeBrock, right? Right. Right? And you ever Gene come, Wilder. And who? Gene Wilder. Gene Wilder. If you ever come across this film, look at the credits. It says Stephen Kravitz. Right. Look at the picture. You will never no find him. Never shot a scene. You never even shot a scene. No, I was on the set for two days. So why, if you were on the set for two days and you didn't have any lines and you're not in the movie, how did you get in the credits? No, I was supposed to have lines. I had a scene to do, but they just cut the scene. They never shot it. They just went long, and, and they said, but, but we'll were do they it re tomorrow. Were, were they required by union requirements to put you in the credits? I think so. Oh. I think so. Well, something, because you got paid, and you got residuals, didn't you? Oh, yeah. That's amazing. And then, of course, here's Sudden Impact, 1983. That was your first film. And you well, actually, Howard the Duck was my first film. Really? Okay, maybe that's in order. This is in the order right. of release. You know. Right. I was involved with Howard the Duck peripherally because for the final oh, scene, well, for the final scene where there was a concert, they had me wrangle an audience. I put the word out on my radio show, meet at the Warfield Theater at 10 o'clock if you want to be in a movie. Right. And I got I filled up the whole audience. You know? I bet you did. And the only thing I remember about that situation was they they start doing whatever they're doing and out comes a guy dressed in a duck costume. And I go to the guy who is from from Lucasfilm. Um now that duck is going to be replaced by animation, right? He's just he's just there so that people will have something to look at. And he said, right. and he said, no, that's the duck. And I looked back at him and I said, you're in a lot of trouble. Yeah, no kidding. <laughs> I mean, one of the worst mistakes ever made was and the Howard way- Howard the Duck was a great, great comic book. Well, that what was so great about Howard the Duck was he was a cartoon duck in a real world. Right. And so, if you if they had just done it as an animated duck, they would have been. This was before Roger Rabbit, right? You know, and who did the who did a lot of the technical stuff on Roger Rabbit? Lucasfilm, Industrial Light and Magic. They right. had the they had the ability to do it. They just didn't do it. You know, and 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 that could have been a successful movie had they done it. But I just remember sitting there looking at him and going, "You're in a lot of trouble." Right. <laughs> yeah. You know, because it just for that didn't... movie. For that movie, I get to make out with this girl, mm -hmm. and then the duck comes flying into the world. Mm -hmm. I, I get him right when he comes into the world, and I go, "What the? F what the? F what the? F yeah." And you're kissing the actress in this scene. Oh yeah. Were you really kissing? I tongued it. Did you really? Yes, sir. If we look at the film, can we see the tongue? I don't think so. I think it's just like a blank. Yeah. She didn't mind it, right? 
No. Oh, okay. Because in this day and age, you'd be me too for that. Oh, you yeah. Know, you know. This day and age, I, I'd be going to jail. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Hey, listen, we've uh, run out of time here. Really? Yes. I love talking about your career. I mean, it's, uh, more, it's more extensive than I ever remember it as being in film. Is that right? Yeah. So you, you had a good business in film. I had a good run. You could probably could go back and get some character roles. Yeah, I don't see why not. Yeah, and you've got the, you know, you've got the list of credits to get you in the front door, so. Right. Why not? And they'll look at the credits and go, Howard the Duck, how can we possibly not audition him? <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, that is, that is Steve Kravitz. Thanks, Steve. Thanks, Alex. This is GabNet, the Great American Broadcast Network, now in its eighth year of talk like you've never heard it before. Yeah, yeah. I, you know, I, it really, it's true. I didn't know that uh, Steve Kravitz's career was that extensive in film. Uh, and he really, uh, he was good at what he did. And I, uh, uh, um, you know, I think he should give it a try again. But whatever. Hello, everybody. How are you? No, except for one person, there is nobody waiting to come on this show. Uh, and uh, I, um, this happens every Thursday. And I, I'm beginning to think maybe there's no reason to do a show on Thursday. Okay? I mean, I'm feeling t very out of it tonight and tired. Uh, I've been having this whole breathing thing, and uh, uh, I don't know what it is. I look, I look all the things up. You know, I use uh, Google as my doctor, okay? And I, I look up each of these things and look for symptoms, and I don't have any of the symptoms of lung cancer, which I know I don't have because I had a CT scan uh, about four months ago. And they, they, they found two little nodes on my lungs, but those aren't dangerous. One of them has been there for, uh, well, since 2015, I think, uh, which means that that was nothing growing, okay? And uh, uh, the other one was a kind of node that is never, for the most part, about 99.9% .9 of the time, not cancerous. So, and they were all small, so they weren't anything to worry about yet. Anyway, anyway, I didn't have any lung cancer then, so that's not a problem. Uh, I'm beginning to really think that it has to do with the, uh, with the work they're doing on the building. But it made me feel like crap today. Just like, just horrible, crappy crap, crap, crap. So, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm sure you're tired of hearing about me griping about my breathing and so on so I won't even talk about it anymore I'll just let you know when I'm dead okay all right uh, so anyway if anybody's gonna call you better do it now because if it's just Jeff and I uh, I'm just gonna stick with that for about 10 15 minutes and then I'm gonna say that's it because we don't have Jack right now uh, Jack is not gonna be doing his show till January okay he won't be back till January uh, and it, you know, has some health issues, and, and there's some other issues which we don't want to talk about. Uh, and I mean, he'll let you know about them if he wants you to know them. But basically, his health has had problems, you know, over the last many months, as you know. And so he is not going to be doing his show uh, tomorrow night. I'm probably going to have, if he can, uh, have Josh uh, do his hour. Uh, and I'm trying to figure out how to do that. I think I might just keep my show going and just turn it over to him. Uh, but anyway, uh, be that as it may, okay. Um, uh, uh, you know, um, uh, it, 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 Jack is not going to be doing his show tonight. And so because he's not doing his show tonight, if I go off right now, it's not going to impact anything, okay. It will not and anything that's a seamless transition to the next show. So, you know, it's the way it is, you know, so. But uh, where are we? Okay, so we have people, we have two people now. Okay, well, I'll, I'll give it a try, and if I don't only have these two people within the next 10 minutes or so, 
I think I just might call this off early. You know, why not? But anyway, let's go and check in. Mm, which with, means that oh, 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 yeah. oh, Jeff got it fast. You got yeah, it, you got, you got, you get, you're getting good at it, Jeff. Yeah. Yeah. Just, yeah, maybe I'm getting lucky. Yeah, maybe you're getting lucky. How you doing tonight? How you doing tonight? How you doing tonight, Jeff? Not too bad. Not too bad. You know, uh, my my wife's mother died the other day. Oh, really? Yeah. Wow. Sorry to hear that. So, how old was yeah. she? She's uh, ninety-three. Oh, come on, that's pretty pretty old. Okay. Yeah. So. Yeah. And you know, so, I mean, Sam Pamela, my you know. My best yeah. wishes. Not, or yeah. her two sisters are here. I'm not saying best wishes. That's not good. No, it's condolences. Well, well I you yeah. know, people always yeah. say, I'm so sorry for your loss. And when they said that yeah. to me when my father died, about oh, the boy. 20th person who said that to me, I just wanted to scream. You know, and then my mother died many years later, and again, it was, we're so sorry for your loss. I mean, and I, I understand people don't know what to say. You yeah. know, and that's the best thing to say. So, yeah. uh, but uh, you know, uh, send her my send her my best, okay? Yeah, I will. You know. I certainly will. Uh, but yeah. I mean, what? What are you going to say, Alan? No, go ahead. I'm sorry. No, go, I wasn't going to yeah. say. I was anything. just going to say. Here it is: the Thursday three Jews again. This was last <laughs> Thursday. The three Jews were on to start with. Other people joined in though. Yeah, but yeah, you know, I mean, but it it just I don't know what it is with Thursdays. I don't know. You know, people don't want to listen to Phil. No, I don't know. <laughs> well, I'm thinking now that uh, that uh, Jack isn't doing his show anymore. I might move this show to another time slot. On you know? Thursday? No, all all the time. You oh, know. so you're gonna move them all for to where Jack's show mm. show was at? No, later. No, no, earlier. 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 Huh? Yeah, you know, what time is not available to you, Alan? Uh, any time is okay with me, just for oh, you, Alan. Oh, damn it! I was hoping you'd t give me a time when I could put this on. And... <laughs> uh, yeah, any time. I'll, 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 don't worry, I'll be on your show. The only show that's too early for me is Monday. And I mean, I if I had to, I could get up early, but you don't want me on the show, and so why why go through it? No, I, that's a different. That that show is a different animal, right? Than this, I yeah. watch it afterwards, and <clears throat> I would I wouldn't fit in. So. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, I'm glad you realized that. And even if you <laughs> did, I wouldn't pick up the phone. I wouldn't pick up the Zoom on you. So anyway, <laughs> it's okay. Yeah, yeah. So I don't know what the hell's wrong with me. I I just. Uh, it's it, cold. Well, that has something to do with it, but I yeah, think I think, so. I, think uh, I think it's this work they're doing on the building. It, it, oh. You know, um, on the drier days like today, when it isn't raining, it's worse than when it's raining because the rain tamps it down a little bit. But I think mm -hmm. that when it dries, it's still sitting there on the sills outside the kitchen and outside uh, the uh, bathroom. The and yeah, but I mean, it don't open the window. It still can seep through the windows. This is an old building, right. you know, and these things seep through, you know. Yeah. So yeah. anyway, oh good. Well, we we have yet another Jew joining us. Hmm. Uh, yeah, uh, Tony. Oh wait a minute, he isn't Jewish. No. <laughs> as much as he complains, you think he would be. So yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, He's an honorary Jew. Yeah. What do you think about this uh, about this uh, whole thing with the uh, what's what, with what's her name? I'm trying to remember her name now. The, oh, the, the lady from uh, Russia, the United States, the the, uh, the lady basketball player, um, mm. being let go by the Russians, and we traded her for a, for a for the what the Merchant of Death, I think was who. Yes. Was, yeah. Yes. Yeah. It was a poor. <laughs> poor I, I, I don't know if I'm ever going to let a guy go named the Merchant of Death. Nope. You know, nope. was a poor exchange. Well, what they did nope. is they they exchanged her, but they didn't exchange the other guy who's there. And they said that yeah. they had to do it while they while they could do it because the Russians said you you we're only going to trade one for one. 
And what I would have said to them was, you want your goddamn merchant of death back, okay? You take two. He's worth two, okay? And the or gave him Donald Trump. Yeah, I mean, yeah, yeah. You know, <laughs> but I, I just found that a little, it bothered me a little bit that they didn't maybe, I'm sure they tried. In fact, Biden's people called the other family, the, I can't remember the guy's name now, and they called his family and told them that about the trade that was going to happen and that his, their uh, relative, their brother, their husband, whatever, yeah. was not going to be let go. So uh, it was not part of the trade. And I just, I don't know, I think it's kind of wrong, you know? What do you, how do you guys feel about it? Oh, that whole system between moving people from Russia to the United States, the United States, I, 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 no, nobody's really willing to do this. What do you mean? And they, they, they're, they make a pain, in, a big pain in the ass out of this whole thing, forever. Well, I mean, the, the Russians, the Russians busted her because they knew she was worth something to them. Yeah. She, they knew that they would get the Merchant of Death out of this deal. Okay. <laughs> and uh, the thing is, with the other guy, uh, I think they're they didn't make a deal. They said one for one, you know, and I think they didn't make the other deal because they're waiting to get maybe somebody else out, but we don't have anybody else in our prisons right now that we can give them. Yeah. They have the guys in Germany that are trying to get out. Okay, well, yeah, but uh, yeah, they're going to trade him for an American. <laughs> oh, there. There there maybe. Russian guys. There are two Russian guys that are in Germany. Yeah. And that's what they that's what they want. But they probably weren't as good as the merchant of death. You can't beat the merchant of death. <laughs> that's right. It's worth ten cents. Yeah. Oh, I say that they're at war. Maybe you can help them if they let them out. <laughs> you never know. They, they said that was the only deal on the table and there's a lot of, you know, publicity pressure, a lot of public pressure. But you know, when you have Unfortunately, I'll say this, but you know, when you have people like Steph Curry and all these other people that are on there saying free her, you know, at what at what expense? Well, and that's well, the part that everybody doesn't understand. There's there's an there's an expense to letting her you know come back, and it was letting this guy go. And this guy's not a good guy. This is, you know, Putin Putin needs this guy right now. He has everybody, you know, going back on him, and this guy is is a loyal guy and does a lot of damage. They had they have a movie, right? That movie was made about this guy. Oh, really? I didn't. Yeah, know. The, um, yeah, man, I forget what the movie was called, but there's actually a movie. Was it, maybe it was called The Merchant Nick, of Death. Nicholas Cage was in. <laughs> Nick Cage, Nicholas Cage was in, and that the movie was about about the, oh, this guy. I, I seem yeah. to remember a movie he did about arms trading. Yeah, and that was the guy. He's really, really bad guy. And, and I wanted her back, but man, it's like at what expense? I think that's a tough one. And that Biden seemed that that was the only deal they had on. Well, the see, I give this guy up. Go ahead. Why should we be feeding him? You know, I mean, <clears throat> take him back. But let's trade him. Let's make it a good trade. He's worth something to the Russians. Give us both yeah. those people. He's two people are worth just him. You know, but Russia, Russia has a pulse on what's going on, and they're going to say no. Well, no. What happened here, and I'm sure of it, is Biden's approval rating is down, and he right. wants his approval rating to go up. So, what would make it go up to get this woman back, right? And oh, same with who else? Who else? Putin. Putin needs a little PR also for the Russians, for the Russians, Ooh. and getting this guy back and saying, mm -hmm. "Look at this lady is a basketball player." And I'm getting this guy back. That's right. The arms dealer, biggest arms dealer in the 90s and early 2000s. Yeah. It was a it's a poor trade, unfortunately. I, I feel I feel for her. But at the same time, we're giving up somebody, a, a basically a terrorist. Let me, he, is, he is a terrorist. Yep. Yeah. Let me look up IMDb here. I gotta find out. He's made so many movies, Nick Cage. I've lost. Track. And, yeah, I know. <laughs> and then he has a movie about him making movies. Yeah, that's I, how many I, movies I he made. I was like, that's him playing himself. I'm all confused. <laughs> that was hell. Yeah, that was a good movie. That was. Funny. I think his last good movie was Leaving Las Vegas. I could be wrong though. He won the Academy. That's the only good movie he ever made. 
<laughs> Gone in 30 seconds. Okay. I, I like the cars. Well, I like the one with, uh, I like Moonstruck, but that's really going back with Cher. Remember, yeah. that was a good one. With the wooden hand. I mm-hmm. just like the cars in Gone in 60 seconds. But Let me see here. Nick Cage. <sighs> hey, man, I got Nick Cage. You know, we're all his movies. And they don't have them here? Where? Come on. They got to be somewhere. Oh, give me a break. Come on. They don't they don't list his movies. Nick Cage is known for oh, maybe this is a different Nick Cage. Let's try let's try Nicholas. 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 Yeah, yeah, that could be it. You know, he he changed his name from I was reading a while back. I knew this a while ago. He's you know, because he's really Nicholas Coppola. He changed the no, Nick Cage. No, it isn't Cage. Nicholas Coppola. No. I think I think no. it was. I don't think it was Coppola. It was something else. Coppola. I'd have to check, but he changed it to Nick Cage because, whatchamacallit, that's uh, his favorite. Uh, oh, here it is. Luke Cage. Where, so Luke where Cage is, they, they say, where is Lord of War streaming? That's Lord the one. of yeah, War. Lord of War, yes. That was it. Lord of War. Well, I just was looking for it, and you found it before I could. Uh, I could uh, actually, uh, actually, it was a top trending. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so so that record. movie is about him? Yeah, that movie's about him. Yep. Do they that's, use that's it, when they said Yahoo on Yahoo page top stories? Uh, where is Lord of War streaming? How to watch the Merchant of Death Victor Boat movie oh about movie? Oh wow! Okay. That's cool. Yeah. So you want to see how bad, and then you can watch like a WNBA game and see which one you know weighs a little more. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But I mean, is she? Is she. I, I, you know, I would say that if I were president, I would say, okay, you know, like we really want this Grainer back, but he's been there longer. Yeah, know? and yeah. and doesn't he deserve to be the first one out? Oh yeah, fifteen yeah. years, and then you know all these all these stupid Trump people are saying, oh, great deal, president. Why can't you get the the marine veteran and you know hype this guy up and i'm like hey trump was in office and you guys didn't get him out either so stop pointing fingers yeah exactly exactly this guy's been in been over there about four years now i still think trading the the two the two terrorists the the one from russia and the one from america called trump well you know i read a thing or i heard a thing i heard a thing where did you hear about this about uh, putin that he fell down a flight of stairs and soiled his pants. Yeah. Oh no! <laughs> really? uh, oh, well, you can you can mix that one in. Then you see Trump going up the stairs to the airplane with the toilet paper there, you know, and then <laughs> he's probably going to see yeah. Putin to help him because he soiled his pants. <laughs> yeah, but the trouble is, is now Putin has probably shot and killed the guy that made the uh, stairs. Oh jeez! <laughs> Nobody lives. Yeah, yeah, poison dot in the neck. Yeah. <laughs> Um, but, uh, you know, I mean, um, I just, I, I just felt bad about that this morning. You know, I mean, I was happy that she got out, you know, but at the expense of him, I think they should have driven a, a harder deal. But I think that for publicity purposes, Biden wanted this deal to go through, you know, know. because I can't believe that if they didn't negotiate further, this guy was worth two of them. Okay, there's no question about it, you yeah. know. Yeah. Oh, here we go. Everybody, oh. everybody, keep please. Don't say dirty words. <laughs> what? Okay. What, what? What is that? He had to do. Uh, she's gonna change in sleeping clothes, so she's gotta yeah. take off her belly thing. Oh, she's gonna be. Sorry, she's gonna be. Well, we don't need to know that. <laughs> hey, close the door, please. Get out. Go do something. Okay. <laughs> <clears throat> she is going to. She's going to go pee on your bed. <laughs> yeah. She just she gets says, pretty. She gets dirty, prettier but... every day, doesn't she? Yeah. Yeah. Oh um, boy! As I say, you better keep a I... baseball bat by the door when she starts dating. You know. No, he's got. He's got. He's got, a, he's, got a, he's got a date with Phil and Alan to teach him how to use a oh. gun. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Yeah, she's she's cool. I, I I talk with her on the way to dancing and stuff like that. Her 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 heart and her everything is in the right direction. It's really good. It also seems to me like um, it is, isn't just that she loves you. That she really you're good friends. You know, 
Would, would you agree with that? Yeah. You know? Yeah, but I smacked her last night, though, because I haven't got mad at her in a while, but she's just <gasps> taking too long to get ready for bed, and then I go into her room, see if she's sleeping, and she has the cat in her hands, you know? It's like, well, you oh say you God. slapped her. You didn't slap her. You probably... I just yelled at her, and the cat just scared her right out of the room. <laughs> <laughs> I felt that for the cat first. Uh, yeah, but but no, she's... Yeah, other than that little stuff, she does you know, good in school, and she's very kind. She's very kind to people. Um, yeah, so so that's really good. Yeah, no, she's a, she a good she's a good kid. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, but. yeah. My my half brother that I don't see that often, and then he just got married. So families that that side of my 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 dad had like five kids, but I'm an only child. So that side of the family saw each other on his wedding uh, last month. So. He actually works some of the schools around here. He he spends like an hour a day with different handicapped, you know, the the, the handicapped people, the kids. Um, so he he works with them and does their physical education and and physical therapy and stuff like that. Now so this is your father. Around. This is your birth father, right? My father's son. Yeah. Your yeah, father's yeah. son. So he's my brother. Oh, he's my half brother. Oh, 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 I see. Okay. Yeah, we had the same father. So uh, yeah. So he actually goes to her school. And sees her now, so so he saw her the other day, and she's all happy. So, yeah. So. Well, that's good. That's nice. Yeah. So, yeah. So she sees that. She sees how he is with those kind of kids, and so you know, so it's it's really good. And does she know her grandfather? Is there is there a grandfather come around? I mean, your father? No, all my, I buried all my family. <laughs> oh really? Oh, he's dead. Oh. And my mom passed away when I was 13. And oh, then, uh, jeez. Yeah. Well, how old was she? She was 37. What happened? She had, so she had, like, phlegm in her throat, and and um, she had asthma. And it was Father's Day Eve. So my dad's, my stepfather, his dad was in town. They were out all night. And so I think she had a, an asthma attack. And the, the congestion in her throat didn't help it, and sort of she suffocated. Mm. Yeah, so my dad came out, and, and in the morning when I'm watching TV, and called called her mm -hmm. ma, her dad, mm -hmm. in the kitchen, and then uh, I ran in there to sort of see what was going on in the bedroom, and I saw her foot was sort of flat, so oh, she was wow. she was trying to get up, but she couldn't. So. Mm. Mm. Oh well, that's Sorry a... to bring that show down. yeah. How old were speaking you? Of, how speaking old? of death. Uh, I was 13. 13, boy. Yeah, and so I was an only child, and she raised me. So, yeah, it was a pretty difficult time. So. And then then what happened? Well, if you were an only child and she so, raised you. Yeah, so my, my birth father had one day with me, and then um, my stepfather, who she had just married, uh, he adopted me. He adopted me, and but then he took off with his girlfriend, so I never saw him. <laughs> so I sort of raised myself. So. Well, wait a minute, but didn't, who raised you? I did. No, but I mean, you did, but what do you do? You're out on the street raising no, yourself? He, no, we had a house, and he was gone. He was at his girlfriend's house in, in the same city, in Red River City. Mm -hmm. He was with his girlfriend all the time. I'd see him like once a month. He would come by and yell at me. And, and you were 13 at the time? 13 until I graduated, and then I left uh, when I was 17. Well, I bet you were a terror in Redwood City. Well, I'm, I'm about ready to say that you probably didn't have any good feelings about your father for that. Yeah, mixed feelings. Yeah. Who the hell? You could do whatever you want in the house. I mean, you were fourteen. With well, the you know, you're supposed to. They say you're. <laughs> I had a lot of parties. <laughs> they say you're supposed to love your parents, right? But you know yeah. something? If they're assholes, yeah. you know, you, there's no rule that you have to. Now you know why I had Adrian at forty-eight. Yeah. <laughs> well, well, you don't make me ask it, Alex. I, but you're a great father. Yeah, well, my father had my father had five kids with four different women, three different women, mm -hmm. and you know, so yeah, so I oh, saw yeah. that and I said, I'm not having a kid until. Who does I'm he think of... he is, Nick Cannon? <laughs> no. So you're yeah. you're kind of making up for your father being a jerk, and you're you're going the extra mile to make sure that you're a good father to her, right? Yeah, I'm getting old anyway, so yeah. Yeah, really. Plus, she yeah. shows an interest in something, so that's like. Yeah. I mean, what else could you ask for? You know, when you have some kid who is passionate about something, I mean, it's awesome. Well, so, Brian you know. Sigmund has joined us, as you may notice. So <clears throat> here we have the Brian conundrum again. 
I, 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 two, I, two Brian's and three Jews. Is that what we're saying? <laughs> Tony, Tony, yeah. Tony's, uh, Tony's, uh, you know, kind of. It's hard to tell. We, oh. he's, a, he's an honorary Jew. Honorary Jew. <laughs> so, so I, somebody wrote me when I said, you know, like, why is nobody here on Thursdays? They said Thursday night football, silly. It's a bad game tonight, boy. So oh, they've had terrible games. Yeah, and, it, they and it's to, not on yeah, regular yeah. cable. It's on uh, Amazon yeah, Prime, so you have I'm to log on. Good. Yeah, nobody's watching that stuff. Oh. They have the Raiders. <laughs> Listen, I got I got a gripe about Amazon. You know, they they've started doing their own deliveries. If you've noticed, and uh, in my apartment, whenever there's like a small package, like a DVD or something, or a micro. A micro memory card or whatever you know they deliver it right to my front door but That's when good. they've got a package that on it says heavy be careful lifting oh, they good. leave that down in the uh, down in the <laughs> foyer downstairs do they take the picture of it alex they do that to me by my house yeah they take yeah. a picture and then they, they say try and then they send me a note saying try lifting this motherfucker <laughs> you know i mean the other day, they left one down there, and I said, I'm getting older. I'm not able to lift like I used to. And I'm carrying this thing up, and it's just... Are you cursing them out going up the stairs? What? Are you cursing them out of going up the stairs? Oh, it's just, well, I'm just wondering, you know, if you can deliver a small little package, why can't you bring the big one? You, you can get it here in six hours, but you can't get it to my fucking dog. <laughs> right, right. Exactly. My, my ring shows them throwing the package onto yeah. the onto the porch, and then they take a picture. They <laughs> don't. Like, no, just... Yeah, they, they love, love taking those pictures, don't they? <laughs> I saw that. I got my book. I thought it's good. Have you tried uh, bribing them to not uh, throw the package on? That's a good point. I they, used to. Get they used to. They used to do that here, and so what I do is. Uh, you know, a couple times a week, and you know, I have packages delivered. I leave a bottle of water out on the porch for them. Oh, that's nice. And then, and then now they're now they're being a lot more gentle with my package on my porch. Hmm. Wait, how many how many different delivery people do you have? Well, I don't know UPS and Fed Up, but mainly UPS and and huh. Amazon. Well, I got an Amazon delivery today, and down down here, I uh, somebody took a picture the other day uh, when they were here and showed it on the Monday show. Underneath my desk here is a nest of wires, because you know, once you start plugging in one plug and another plug, and then you have to add a uh, another uh, a power thing. What do they call them? Power strip, power and then strip. you add another power strip. I have. How many power strips here? One, two, three, four, five, Jesus. six, seven, maybe seven power strips. And they're all plugged into one plug? Yeah. Yeah, that's oh. fine. That's fine because a lot of the stuff that is using it doesn't pull a lot of electricity. Okay. So what I'm th what I decided to do was I went and saw went and bought a thirty dollar power strip that holds twenty two plugs. <laughs> Uh, wow. And it has about eight plugs that you can do the blocks because there's a lot of room there. And then down the the center are just regular plugs. So yeah, I'm Alex. thinking this weekend of hooking them those all up, but I'm just afraid to because I'm afraid I won't be able to figure out how I how I got all that electricity going to whatever, and something's not going to go go on, you know. And I so I'm. I'm still trying to figure out. You know, you talked last night about getting Jack one of your old uh, Apple computers. Mm -hmm. This guy has so much trouble turning on a computer. I don't know. Well, that. I think that this would be easier than a PC for him. I mean, uh, I don't know. Do you have a Mac? No. Who has a Mac here? Any no. of you guys? I do. So you know how it's it's relatively easy to use in comparison to other computers. Yeah, took yeah. Enough three years to learn how to turn it on. So what I'm going to do is, if I put this thing together for him, I'm going to put it together, and I'm going to load in just the three or four programs he needs to do a show. Right. And then he can just you know go from there. That's you know, a good idea. And have it all configured and yeah. everything. It would probably mm -hmm. be easy for him, you know. But anyway, let me see here. So what else is in the news? 
Harry and Meghan, I just watched the three. I three watched episodes. it too. You know something? It was pretty good. Didn't yeah, you? I changed my opinion of them because I, I had this suspicion that Meghan was a troublemaker. And, <laughs> and then I watched it, I'm like, oh, I love these people. You know, you know something? She she yeah. comes off as very smart, very bright, and very committed. <laughs> I mean, she was doing a lot of before she ever went with uh, with Harry. She was working with the UN, and she was doing a lot of good works. So <laughs> she was she. Uh, you know, whatever you think of her, this thing makes you think otherwise. Yeah, and it's really basically an indictment on the press, and you can't. You can't think that Megan somehow hoodwinked Harry into turning against the royal family life, because the press killed his mother. He, you know, so it's it's it's. I don't know. I thought it was really well. well the done, the, the I, thing they show there, at least in these, there are three more episodes that are on next week. Okay, um, and uh, probably there they start talking maybe a little bit about the arguments within the family about her. But they were talking about how just the British press was vilifying her because of her race. Oh, some of his headlines yeah. were unbelievable. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And and I can see why he got her out of there. You know, he probably wanted to protect her and his family from what was a very racist climate that was out against her. Uh, this and, this, hmm? this documentary was the way. Sorry to interrupt you. Was the way to do it. The Oprah interview just. The, the, that just did not. That went over like a lead balloon. Well, because but Oprah's it, it, Oprah's going to ask all the questions that are going to, you know, get ratings and uh, you know make news and so on and so forth. And this thing chose to really just try and show them in a light that they feel they wanted to be shown in, which was her as a very intelligent person. I mean, I can see very much what he found, what he fell in love with in this documentary. And you can also see that they're very much in love with each other. <clears throat> so, you know. Uh, but I mean, just the, the whole the whole deal with uh, the whole deal with her father. Oh. You know, he he didn't. They disinvited him to the wedding because he he sold pictures to the press mm -hmm. of himself working out and getting ready for it and all of that and. Wow. It sounds like it sounds like he he skipped. Which actually, I didn't think any of that looked all that bad. It was kind of endearing, uh, a little bit. Like you know, dad getting ready to you know go on the world stage, but um, it, that that those conversations when when he went in the hospital, it, it sounded more like he skipped out of the wedding because he got embarrassed. Yeah, you know, he, he got he got caught being being a little shady. I often wondered how the royal family off the grid felt about Megan's mother being there who was very black mm -hmm. you know um, uh, it, it had to have somehow you know it, it wasn't what they were used to it wasn't in their comfort zone yeah yeah but I, I thought that I thought the same thing because when, when you saw her in contrast with everybody in the church and then you go yeah you know uh, I it makes you wonder but uh, her mom uh, came across great in the documentary. Real sweet woman, smart woman. Oh, very smart. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I found her quite. That's why I'm glad I watched the documentary because I was just, <laughs> I had a preconceived notions that were opposite. You I probably saw. felt by watching it you'd hate her even more, right? Yeah. 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 And I found I really liked her. I really mm -hmm. felt she was terrific. Yeah. You know? And so, so of course, right before I saw you. That, that you guys were live on my YouTube feed, I uh, I, I I had to type in uh, reaction, you know, to this, you know, the, the Meghan and Harry reaction, and <laughs> Piers Morgan just he comes, oh God, he just cannot stand him. He, he like the whole time he was watching it, whatever lens he was looking through, nothing changed his mind on them, and. And it was, I don't know, I, and, and then I was looking at the British tabloids uh, uh, headlines after, you know, because this thing released like early this morning, like four in the morning. Mm -hmm. And they, 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 they just do not let up. They, they, they're they just, they just stirring so much shit. Yeah, how much shit could you stir over what you saw? You can't. I know. You can't. They, but you, Piers Morgan, Piers Morgan, by the way, 
is the guy, you know, um, Rupert Murdoch's News Corp was charged with like uh, 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 doing a lot of uh, hacking of people's phones, including Harry's, right? And you know who was uh, ordering that up when he was at Rupert Murdoch's little um, newspaper? Piers Morgan. Hmm. You know, I mean, Piers Morgan's a real asshole. Well, Absolute her, asshole. Her dad's right up to the wedding. Her dad's phone got hacked, apparently. Yeah. And, he, and, and like, completely cut him off. So <laughs> what if that was him? Right? Yeah. If they're doing hacking, I mean, th their phone totally got compromised. Yeah. And then someone was posing as him, trying to talk to Meghan and Harry. But yes. They, well, that was like this kind of stuff Piers Morgan would do. They would go in, hack the phones, and then start sending texts that looked like he was sending them. Hmm. You know, it's just horrible. Just horrible. Yeah. Uh, but, I mean, I, I don't blame him at all for getting out of Dodge and getting away from that family. I, th I think he still gets money. You know, he still gets a stipend of one sort or another. And even if he doesn't, a hundred million dollar deal with Netflix. Was that a hundred? Was it a hundred million dollar deal? That's what that's Ooh. what the sleazy tabloids say. Well, God, you know something? I'd tell more than they told there. You know, <laughs> you know. But I mean, it it uh, it's really amazing. It's just amazing. Uh, and. I, I thought I would hate the documentary. I told Marjorie, you watch it. I'm not going to watch it. And I watched about five minutes of it, and it kind of grabbed me. Hmm. And then I kept watching it, and, I, and I watched, we watched all three episodes this afternoon and looked at each other and went, it's pretty good. You know, yeah. It's not what we thought it was. It's not the cheap, sleazy kind of let's go get our royal family, let's rat on the family thing we expected it to be. But uh, I'm trying to think what else was in the news. There were a couple other things in the news, and I I completely, you know, phased out on them. So, excuse me for having done so. Um, but uh, you know, the biggest story is, of course, uh, uh, the uh, basketball player getting like released from Russia, and uh, yeah, you know, all my buddies are upset about that. I, we're all upset about it. Because we think the guy, they shouldn't have let her, they should have made it a two-person deal and just yeah. held out for it. Because, let's face it, Putin wanted this guy back. After all, you know, your, your arms merchant is a very important person in your life, you know. Sure. <laughs> and, and they should have just, uh, they just should have put their, dug their heels in and said, no, both of them are nothing, you know. Uh, and uh, but I think Biden was so anxious to make a deal so he'd look good, you know and that he's he just going to look good for a short time, huh? People are going to forget about this in a couple of weeks, and they'll look so... bad again. What if it was a smart deal, huh? What? What if it was a smart deal? Well, you know, what if this arms dealer is either knowing, knowingly or unknowingly compromised, and maybe he's worth more on the outside than we thought. What do I mean, mean, that's that's about as that's about as hopeful as you can get with looking at that deal. But mean, I'm just saying. Mean, mean, what do you mean by that? That that we have gotten to him and he's told spilled the beans on everything, and now we're sending him back to do our dirty work. Oh no! Or now send him back to maybe a certain death. Uh, maybe we're sending him back and his connections mm -hmm. are compromised and he doesn't know it. No, but he can't be killed because he's the merchant of death, and and he sells it. <laughs> <laughs> the terrorists. <Hail. laughs> you know, well, of course, that's I have no evidence for this. I just shit like that. Okay. Yeah. Well, <clears throat> we just want to make sure, you know. That you're... This is an evidence-based show, Brian. <laughs> yeah. Right. Yeah. That's yeah. why we bring Phil in on Wednesdays. I, I loved it when <clears throat> all those all those news agencies would go. After John Stewart, and you know John Stewart just say, "This is a fake news show. What are you guys all upset about us about?" <laughs> yeah, it's a fake. It, it is a fake news show, right? Right. Yeah. yeah. yeah no, How long was the guy in uh, United States? Huh? How long was he uh, in the United States? Who? Like oh, this guy. Yeah. He had been here. 
I seem to think something like six years or something. He's been here. Yeah, he has like seven more. He has seven more years on his sentence. Yeah. 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 Well, well, gee, he should have just waited. You know. Held out. Yeah. Uh, Celine Dion has been diagnosed with incurable neurological disease. Did you hear about that? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Too much cocaine. It's called. What is it? Are you ready for the name of this disease? Sure. Stiff person syndrome. Get over that. Never heard that. Person. It's stiff person syndrome. I thought that's what you got stiff. from taking Cialis. I thought that was a good yeah. thing. <laughs> yeah, I thought it was a good thing too. Uh, yeah. But uh, let me see here. I'm trying to see here. I'm, lo I'm looking at Drudge. Um, uh, oh, me see. too. That's funny. Yeah. Uh, yeah, so you're just going to glaze over the uh, vagina on a chip? <laughs> <laughs> What'd you say? Maybe that's only on yours. <laughs> I think it, it, it's funny because the, the two of us are both looking at Drudge, and right underneath the stiff person syndrome is, you know, scientists have designed a vagina on a chip. Oh, oh, really? What is that yeah. all about? There's something. I think it's only on Brian's. <laughs> <laughs> no, it says uh, do Dr. Don Inger makes organs for a living using flexible pieces of silicone carved with tiny channels. He grows tissues that can mimic the complex physical interactions between cells and fluids, creating malleable three-dimensional models of organs. Well, over the past decade, he has made more than 15 of these organ chips including those simulating lungs, livers, intestines, and skin. And now he's described in a paper published last month that he's added a far less studied organ to the list, the vagina. <laughs> that's a good. I See, I read the article because I, I said, oh, wow, that's going to get a lot of use in the future. And uh, apparently it's, it's all about studying the microbiomes down there and how women, you can't get women to test products because, you know, it's very delicate you know, personal area. So now they can do all these like wild testing that they want to do. I mean, that, and that's what he's saying, but I think this shit's going to be on the market soon. People are going to be flying off the shelf. Well, yeah, I guess. But well, a, personal testing. <laughs> <laughs> See, now, how's the virus ship going now? This should be raging, I hope. Yeah, you have to have a Windows computer or a Mac computer to get it. <laughs> um, but anyway, I just uh, I, there's not a lot to talk about, you know. Now that uh, uh, all the election stuff is over with, and well, how, how are you feeling about Trump, Tony? Lately, I can't. Where is he? You, you I can't get behind him anymore, Alex. Well, you could, you got a, you got behind him for about a minute and a half, I think. I mean, he wanted to rip up the Constitution. I mean, come on. I think. Do you think this is? You know, I, I, do you think he's losing his mind, or is this just really him? I think he lost his mind a long time ago. Yeah. No, he's a he's a sociopath. I mean, yeah. That that's the problem. I want to know what's going on with <laughs> the people that are following him because, first of all, everybody I ever voted for. I ripped them a new asshole the day after they got elected. I voted for Obama twice, and I complained about him through his entire presidency. Where are? That's what I wish people had. Like, you have to make excuses for Trump. Like, he's an extension of yourself. Like, what is this? What is this compulsion well, I, to protect yeah. him? I think they tried to tell uh, Herschel Walker that he was a sociopath, and he said, "No, he's not. A, he's a, he's a, he's a dem he's democratic." <laughs> yeah, uh, did but, he concede? Well, yes, he did. He very, it was a very nice concession speech. It was a okay. very nice concession speech. I didn't understand a word of it, but it was a very nice concession speech. Can we quote you on that? <laughs> what is he talking about? You know, I mean, I had to get with one last Herschel Walker joke in before it expired. It, it, it was done. You know. the, the, it was done in Ebonics. Watch out. So Tony, when did you? So you you were a Trump supporter, and then when did you? When did you? Tell I actually, him? actually, I never voted for the man. Thank God. But I, you know what it was? I think Phil. I'm not trying to blame him. He was starting to rub off on me a little bit. I think I was frustrated more with Biden because I didn't like the way he was running the country, the buyback. I just didn't think like Biden was being proactive enough on issues. And then 
I'll be honest, I get I got so disgusted that I think I said, well, who knows in four years if this country's running the shit, maybe I would vote for Trump, kind of like that. But I can't see myself. But you know, you you look at Biden and you know all the things they blame him for, which a lot of them are are not his fault. Um, but uh, some of the things he's done, gas prices nationally are down to three dollars and thirty cents a gallon. I and, heard Phil and, say last night it's five dollars by him. Well, that's oh, in he, no, he he he's in Walnut know. Creek. And he's stupid. Yeah, that's that doesn't. No, what are, what are, what what, what are the gas? Most, what are the gas stations well, in Walnut Creek? I pay super, and that's you see him coming and it's under five dollars now. It's under yeah, five dollars. Yeah. You can find oh, regular yeah. for. Four now that's in a state grand. where you have a lot of taxes thrown on to your, you know. Yeah. Every time they need a new tax, they put it on gas. Where other states don't have gas tax, but the average nationally is three dollars and thirty cents. There are probably some states in which it goes below three dollars. Yeah. Well, besides the strategic reserve, I mean, I, I don't know. There's a lot of stuff I'd never really pinned on presidents, and so besides the strategic reserve, you know, playing with that a little bit. I mean, does it really matter what the gas prices are? It, you know, with, with presidents in office. Mm. I mean, it's almost like, you know, it's like all the people I know that always vote Republican because their only interest is the stock market. Well, you know, what can he, what can anybody, in, what any one individual do about gas prices or the, or the, uh, the, the cost of living? You know, uh, prices go up, prices go down. They have nothing to do with, I mean, why, why would uh, the price of uh, hamburger go up? because of, uh, of, of a particular individual. You know, all those shitholes that were running for Congress who were going, elect me and I'll go to Congress and I'll lower the gas prices. Mm -hmm. No, you're not. There's no <laughs> way you're gonna be able to lower the gas prices on your own. And there's nothing Congress can do short of saying, let's go into the national supply and make it cheaper that way that we're gonna be able to even solve this problem. You know, it's going to have to come down because it comes down. Uh, Alex, do you remember when Newt Gingrich came out and said we should look into having a national oil policy? Mm -hmm. the national, do you that at all? A national oil. National oil policy. What's a national speaking? oil policy? It's basically it's basically socializing our our oil to gas production. And it was a position he took. It was a very convenient position he took. And I was like, what? And you know he says it like unapologetically, like 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 nobody was going to think any further into it. You know, if you don't remember it, it's it's it has no effect. I'm just saying uh, that's that's the flim flam that you get with these people that are just you know trying to keep their popularity up. I mean, you'll see I anything. interviewed I interviewed Newt Gingrich twice, and in both cases found him to be an absolutely disgusting, vile human being. Really? But the first time I interviewed him, I was civil to him, okay? I didn't ask any gotcha questions because I wanted him to come back. <laughs> so we had a fairly decent discussion, although I challenged him on a couple of things and so on. But the second time he came by, I said, this is, this is the time he, he, he bit, bit the bait here, okay? Now I'm going to get him good. And I, at one point during the interview, I said to him, let me ask you a question. You a religious man? He said, yeah. I said, do you go to church every Sunday? He says, yes, as much as I can. And I go, good. I said, how come uh, on the day of the Lord's Day and the day of rest, you're on all those Sunday talk shows? And he couldn't answer the question. He just gave me a look like, and then he kind of like, I guess he tried to give some kind of bad answer. But I always wondered why these guys are so damn religious are all, you know, I mean, I can see why Chuck Schumer's on the Sunday shows because he goes to synagogue on Saturday, you know? But why do all these people who say they're so religious, they all show up on the Sunday morning shows? I never could figure that one out. You know. Money, 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 money. Yeah, but he was just a prick. Just an absolute prick. Uh, 
did not like him. And I've had a couple of people on who I did like, who were Republicans and they were asshole Republicans, but I liked them. Uh, Buchanan was one who I actually liked because I felt he was smart. I didn't agree with him, but he was smart. And, mm -hmm. um, you know, anyway. I remember in the Sirius XM days, you, you talk about Tucker Carlson. Well, I used to be Adam. on his show every, every week. Is that right? Yeah, when he was on okay. MSN, when he was on MSNBC, believe it or not. Was the bow tie days? No, this was. I don't think he was doing the bow tie anymore. Okay. You know, I never, I never met him, oddly enough, because he did the show. I don't know. if They don't do it now at MSNBC, but in those days, all the MSNBC shows came from New Jersey, because they had a big studio over in New Jersey, and there's a whole story about why that existed at NBC. That was because they didn't want. Well, that was because they didn't want to have to pay. The, there was a there was a, um, a tax on any film coming into Manhattan in those days, and so they had a, th a studio right. that fed all the film from New Jersey, so they wouldn't have to pay the taxes. But anyway, those same studios were used to house a lot of the MSNBC programs, and Tucker Carlson did his show from New Jersey. Meanwhile, I was in a studio in New York uh, with a camera looking at me, and I was, you know, that's, that's how I appeared on the show. So I never met Tucker. You well, know, I remember you always talking about him, so the name was in my head. Yeah. He, <clears throat> he, 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 was, he was very good to me. He was very good yeah, to me. You, and you would say that, so, but I didn't know anything about him. And then I saw an interview with him on the Rubin Report, and it's just what a great interview it made him look like just the average guy but then so then i watch him on fox like Yo, this is the fucking guy alex is talking about i mean it just i can't believe my eyes when i watch his show well he got fired yeah. off of cnn okay that's where he started he did the the point counterpoint show or whatever that show was uh, mm -hmm. um, where they would have two opposing views and then they would have two other people who had opposing views and then they would argue with each other I can't remember, what was the name of that show? It was, uh, oh God, I forget now. But anyway, but they let him go on that. So then he went over to MSNBC and he did the show there and that didn't work out for him. So he finally wound up, he, did, he wasn't working for a while. And then he wound up on Fox and I think he just said, I'm gonna do anything it takes to keep this job, you know? And so he became the Tucker Carlson we know today. I can't say that he wasn't a right winger when I was on his show, but he was a, a, a very reasonable right winger. Okay, I could have a discussion with him. He used to put me on with a right winger from Florida, and we used to debate back and forth for about 10 minutes, 15 minutes, and once a week on Fridays. It was a regular feature for about 10 weeks. And until uh, uh, MSNBC said, ah, get rid of that segment, it's not working, you know, so. Well, he does this thing where he asks questions, like he's just asking a question, and it annoys the piss out of me because the question itself insinuates the answer he wants you to have, but he has this plausible deniability that he's stoking shit. And it, 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 to me, it's like it's well, like what I what I can't stand religion. what I can't stand about Tucker is that stupid face he always has. <laughs> yes. I agree. It's I just agree. a constant stupid face, you know. He's like he's in amazement with everything around him, you know, uh, and yet he gets phenomenal rating. He gets better ratings than Hannity. Yeah. In fact, they just released the ratings, didn't they? It's right here. Oh no, these are these well, are networks. No, no, no these are uh, various news outlets and how they do and how many people are watching them or whatever. No, actually, this is web pages being watched. He liked right. to put it up because it, down, hmm. down there is uh, somewhere is Drudge Report. It's down there around number six or something like that. So, you know. But, you know, I mean, uh, uh, what I hate most about these right-wing talk show hosts is they're doing what they're doing to make money. They're not, it's not like they're, they have those feelings because they really believe them. 
You know, I have to say that, and I'm not, um, I'm not a big fan of MSNBC, but I will have to say that I find the hosts on MSNBC seem to care about what they're saying, you know. Whereas I always feel, I never felt that Hannity was the real deal, you know. I never felt that Tucker was the real deal. Uh, they all seem like people who know where their bread is buttered and they're going to get that bread buttered at any, at any cost, even to their own shame. I don't know, what is that noise tonight? Is that one of your computers making clunking noises? Somebody's cell phone. Hmm? I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna give the person up, but somebody uh, when when that when that phone happens, their little yellow th thing around them lights up. Who? <clears throat> I can't give them up. No, well, come on, Brian. Brian. Brian? What not, the? Not, not, oh not... no, it's my click. Oh, it's my mouse. Uh huh. It's, there we go. It's your mouse. Yeah. Okay, I just want to know what it was. I don't care. It was. It was there last night too. I don't. <clears throat> I don't care. Yeah, and I, don't worry. Nothing. No noises like that would come from New Jersey. Mm, okay. You're safe. <laughs> just horns. Oh, yeah, it is. It is. Wow. I yeah. didn't know it was that sensitive. I think yeah, you. I think you. I, I think you can probably do something on your computer to silence that. Actually, if you. If, but yeah. Oh, <laughs> well, now you're gonna do it all the time, okay? Yeah, because he's clicking around. Oh, he muted himself. That's not. No, good. don't mute yourself. You don't have to mute yourself. Yeah. Sorry. Yeah. No, uh, that's good. No, just let me know. I didn't even know that. Yeah. Uh, let me see here. So anyway, I don't. Uh, we got about two minutes left. Anybody want to say something? Is there any? Yeah, I had a friend pass away last week, really bad. Really? So, yeah. Pancreatic cancer. She's only fifty. Wow. Really? In a year. Yeah. She's really she's a good friend of mine. <clears throat> About thirty years. Very beautiful outside. Works out, eats good and all that stuff. And hit her uh January last year. And uh it's like, you know, she says it doesn't matter. She was Miss California like two thousand eight. Wow. I mean, she says it doesn't matter the good food you put in your body or how you work out or how you look on the outside, all the inside is gonna take you when it takes well, you. Well, I'm here to tell you it's it's Definitely, a lot of it has to do with age. Not that uh, age, is, is that when you're younger and you get it, it's much deadlier than if you're older and you get it. Mm. You know, I mean, I got it, I got it, and it, it, I got it, and it's complete, it was completely curable, or at least hope for well, it. Prostate cancer, he said. Yeah, this is pancreatic cancer. Pan pancreatic oh, yeah, that's the worst. That's the bad one. Well, that's what my ex wife Ronnie had. Yeah. You know. Uh, only she had an operation for it called the Whipple procedure, which is they take away half your guts, but yeah. it 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 yeah. it does work, and it did work with her. But that wasn't what killed her. It's just the cancer spread somewhere else, you know. Usually, yeah. by the time they find that you have uh, that cancer, it's at stage four cancer. Already. Well, when my friend Bill Hicks got it, they told him you have prostate, you have pancreatic cancer. You have six months to live. Go home and make your peace with everything. Yeah. You know, they, they just send you home. They just say, that's it. There's nothing we can do for you. You yeah. know, but occasionally, in about 10% of the cases, they can do this Whipple procedure. And in about half of those, the odds are really going down here, but about the half of those, people actually survive, you know. Yeah. And the day will come when we can, the problem with pancreatic cancer, and uh, then I got to, Start the theme here. Oh, the pancreatic cancer. There's no show later. What? There's no show later. Don't put pressure on us. Uh, well, no, I'm saying <laughs> that the uh, that the um, pancreatic cancer is by the time they find it, it's too late. Oh, so yeah. if they have new <laughs> procedures that can find it earlier, right. they can maybe save people a lot of lives uh, from it. But yeah. you know, there'll be a day when they have a cure for it. They can take care of it and so on. It was like my father's pituitary tumor. He died from it, and a few years later, they could operate on a pituitary tumor. So it's all a matter of medicine. Hey, that's our theme song, folks. Hey, it turned into a pretty good little hour of, of, uh, of um, whatever, you know. Uh, Jeff, thank you so much. Nice seeing you. Around, and my, my best to your wife, and tell her I, thank you know. I, I, I'm, I'm sorry for her loss. Now punch me. Uh, 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 Alan, thank you so much. Tony, you've been so quiet tonight. 
It's been fun. Yeah, I got to send you some more coffee. Yeah, oh yeah. Brian, thank you, and other Brian, thank you. All of you, give a big wave goodbye, and I'll give a wave goodbye at you, okay? And there they go, folks. That's our citizen panel for tonight. And uh, they will reconvene again tomorrow night. There's no Jack Bishop tonight. There won't be till uh, January, okay? So get used to it. In the meantime, that's it for me. We'll see you again tomorrow night, same time, same station in life. In the meantime, as always, if you see her, tell her I love her, okay? Bye-bye. <laughs>